What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with a full review of the first PlayStation certified phone. This is a device that had been rumored for almost years. Let's go ahead, take a look and see if it's worthy of the PlayStation name. So to say Sony's had maybe a rough few weeks with their PlayStation name and the PSN network getting a little bit of hacked would probably be an understatement. But that doesn't take away from what the Xperia Play promises to bring and that is PlayStation Gaming Mobile. Uh, so let me remind you of the specs of this guy and then we'll go ahead and run through all the phone goodness that it has. So it's got a four inch diagonal display and that is TFT with a resolution of 480 by 854. It's being powered by a Scorpion ARM one gigahertz processor. And we'll talk about how the performance is in just a minute. 512 megabytes of RAM and ROM. It's got an Adreno GPU graphics accelerator. Uh, it's got a five megapixel camera on the back with autofocus flash and some cool kind of smile detection business. Uh, it can shoot video in 720p, so that's 1280 by 720. It's running Android 2.3 Gingerbread, which is kind of awesome. And it's got a pretty beefy battery here, which is going to get you through most of the day. All right, so that's great. There are the specs. Let's first talk about call quality. This is a phone and it's got to make phone calls. This is the unlocked unit, uh, which is available to be purchased from the folks at clove.co.uk. It'll work on AT&T's 3G network, if you guys are wondering. Uh, Verizon has announced they will be carrying it in the US. It'll be in storage on the 26th, available for pre-orders on the 19th. But if you are on AT&T or T-Mobile and you're looking to get your hands on this guy, uh, check out the folks at clove.co.uk. Link will be down below. Call quality was just about average. In my 20 call tests, I had three dropped calls. People on the other end definitely knew I was on a cell phone. There was some popping and the call quality was a little bit tinny. Uh, I did have Bluetooth connectivity issues. So definitely want to check this uh, compatibility wise with your car's Bluetooth or your headset. Uh, if that's what you use for phone calls, something definitely to keep in mind. Speaker phone, uh, was quite loud. All right, so let's talk about the screen. We'll jump past all that business. How does this thing look? Well, let me show you what some pictures look like here. This is always a good way to show. We'll go ahead and jump into wallpapers, Sony Ericsson wallpapers. Let's go ahead and take a look at a red one. We'll go ahead and set it. And you can see the pictures look about average. We've got it set to auto brightness here. It doesn't look bad, it doesn't look great. I expected a little brighter images uh, to pop a little bit more from Sony. A uh, company that's really known for uh, for high quality displays, but the real test for me is how text looks. So I'll go ahead and jump into the browser. There we go. Uh, you can see on a white background, there's a little bit of a grayish blue tint, something that we saw with the first generation AMOLED screens uh, that Samsung put out. Nothing giant, but it's definitely there. Text is crisp. So you're not going to have any trouble reading text on its four inch screen. Uh, there's a couple other interesting things here to note as well. Uh, I know you guys are a lot of performance junkies out there. I did run this through a quadrant test and it pulled in a pretty respectable 1,392. And this is with the stock ROM. There wasn't anything flashed on here. This is just how Sony Ericsson ships it. And speaking of how Sony Ericsson ships it, their Android UI is called Timescape. It sort of puts everything together in a big list of stuff. I didn't like it. I turned it off. Um, I generally didn't use it. But they do give you some cool functionality and there are some neat Sony Ericsson widgets here. You can do your little pinch to zoom thing. You can see all your widgets here splayed out. I wish you could have moved them around from the screen. You can't, you can just see them and jump right to them. Uh, there are some to like. I'll go ahead and show you very quickly what some of the Sony Ericsson custom widgets are. You can see some of the standard Android ones here and then some of the other ones that Sony goes ahead and adds for you. Uh, one of the kind of cool touches that it does give you are some animations, which I'm sure just suck battery. If I wanted to move an icon around, you can watch what it does when I do it. It does a little bounce. It's very subtle, but it really lets you know they're using a high quality uh, device. One of the gripes that I had about the phone is the placement of the buttons here on the bottom. Uh, so first, I like that there are physical buttons. I do wish that there was some sort of backlight. So if I was in a dark setting uh, and the screen wasn't providing enough brightness, I could see what the buttons are because they are in a very strange order that I haven't really seen on any other Android phones. You've got the back button, home button, menu button, and search button. 
Whereas if you look on other Android phones, here is say the Droid Charge, for example, with a more standard button layout, um, you've got a little different setup here with the back button located uh, on the second to the right, the menu button on the left, it's just a little bit odd. I'm not saying it's bad, it just wasn't what I was used to. So if you're coming from another Android device, definitely going to have a little bit of a finger memory learning curve. That's not the big deal with the Xperia Play. What everybody wanted to see and what I wanted to see was what lives when you slide this up. And this is where the Xperia Play gets its name. Uh, this is able to play a pretty decent amount of actually PS1 games, and that's where a lot of these Xperia Play games come from. Uh, so let me give you a quick example of what one of these games look like. So I'll go ahead and use the buttons that I've got right here. I've got an Android menu button, and when you're gaming, you also have two shoulder buttons that live right there. I'm going to go ahead and go back home, and I've got Crash Bandicoot was a game that I was playing. It was available to be downloaded. And uh, I'll show you guys in just a minute, when you download these games, they actually come from the Android Marketplace. I thought there was going to be some sort of custom uh, Sony skin store, and it's just a Sony store in the Android Marketplace. So you can see what the graphics look like. They are pretty impressive, but they're nothing better than I haven't seen on any other uh, Android device. Really what the killer thing is here is a game catalog and the ability to play other uh, PS1 games, which are extremely popular. So because of the size of the phone, this four-way navigation is really, really tight and close together. I had a hard time sort of moving my fingers around. I've got relatively large thumbs, uh, making sure I didn't hit two buttons. It took some getting used to. Something to bear in mind. Oftentimes I was hitting a corner and hitting two. Uh, the four shaped buttons, the typical Sony buttons here, the triangle, the X, the square, and the circle, I like saying that to show I, I proved that I know my shapes, uh, did work very well. I didn't have any of the same issues with the arrows for whatever reason. And you got these two, I always feel dirty when I do this, those uh, uh, touch buttons here which are used for uh, some navigation. Sometimes you need to uh, control them. Kind of neat to see, and you've got your start and select button. Uh, games work well, the controls were fun. It didn't kill battery as much as I would like. I was able to get a full day uh, while playing some serious games on here. But in all honesty, the games that Sony gives you uh, can be a bit expensive. In fact, I'll show you what some of those are uh, in a minute. But for me, one of the most appealing things about having a phone like this is something like this. So assuming that you own the original cartridges, uh, you can download a ton of emulators for different games. Uh, so I've got a Super Nintendo emulator here, and I always go ahead and playing my Super Mario Brothers, which was kind of awesome, and you can map these controllers for anything you want. And this is what made the Xperia Play uh, really cool, and probably wasn't what Sony was aiming at, uh, but it really let me feel like I could take a Super Nintendo with me anywhere. And there are emulators available for a ton of consoles, and of course, only games that, uh, you own you know, Genesis, Nintendo, on really any other console, this can very easily handle. So we'll go ahead and exit out of this. Let me go ahead and show you some of the other options here for purchasing games, uh, so you can see what that might look like. All right, so as you guys might have seen, when you open this up, you are gonna be taken to the PlayStation sort of store, and you can see there are a ton of different games. Let's go ahead and take a look at Hockey Nations 2011. Um, this is going to open up right from the Android Marketplace. You can see the price of the games. Uh, and some of the games range from 11 to 12 bucks down to as low as 99 cents. This particular one here, uh, $3.99, available in the sports game category. Go ahead and hit download and you can get your game on. Go ahead and jump back home. Uh, so what's the final conclusion on the Xperia Play? Uh, to be honest, the benefits that Sony Ericsson was gaming at here with the PlayStation Store and the PlayStation Certified Experience is average. The game quality as you saw on Crash Bandicoot was just okay. Uh, I wasn't overly impressed with, with gameplay on that particular game uh, or the controls in general. What really sells the Xperia Play for me uh, is the built-in gamepad for emulators really opens up a ton of possibilities for this device. Uh, so if you do find yourself on a subway, on a train, playing a lot of games and touch only controls aren't doing it for you or mapping buttons to your corded keyboard aren't doing it for you. This is going to be a really solid device uh, to look at. You can take really full advantage of an awesome gaming experience uh, just based on having this gamepad. Now certainly you could probably do this with a Bluetooth keyboard or a micro USB attachment if your phone supports it, which would probably make this a bit obsolete. Generally on a phone this thick, I would want to have a keyboard. However, I can really live with it. If you are a gamer and you want to take your games with you, I can definitely recommend the Xperia Play. Performance was solid, battery life was good, screen was average, call quality, 
I wasn't overly impressed with, but it did work. Um, if I had to give this sort of a one out of five ranking here, uh, I'd probably give it a very solid three and a half. I would have liked to have seen a little bit of brighter screen with some crisper images uh, and some crisper text. And I would have liked to have seen a more robust PlayStation Store on here uh, with a better quality and selection of games. The Timescape interface was okay. It wasn't overly clunky. You can obviously turn it off or customize it because it is Android but it was just all right. Uh, anyway, guys, love to hear what you have to say and your thoughts on the Sony Ericsson Xperia Play. I am John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo, and I'll see you in the next video.